Please banner has come and gone and a lot of people are still wondering how to most optimize their brand new adorable pyro DPS catalyst user. Hi, my name is Blossoms and welcome to another Genshin Impact build video. And today we're going to be going over Klee, some of her weapons, the artifacts some different team combinations, as well as going over her kit in general. She's still a really strong pyro DPS, certainly not the best, and she does suffer from a little bit of clunkiness, but she does excel in a couple areas that we'll be talking about in this video today. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this kind of content, but let's go ahead and get into it. First up, let's talk about her kit, and all of the talents here are pretty equally important in contributing to her damage, so you're going to need to invest in all of them, and we'll go ahead and start off with her normal and charge attacks, plunging attacks, and you'll notice here that they actually all deal AoE pyro damage, and this isn't always the norm, especially for Catalyst users, they generally only get AoE on their charge attack, but not their normal attacks. And this is because Klee actually throws bombs for her normal attacks and they deal AOE pyro because they're, well, literal explosions. And these actually also count as a heavy hit. So that means she's going to be breaking shields a lot easier than some other characters and adding a lot more like not back to a bunch of different characters as well, stunning them and preventing them from actually dealing damage. So that's a really awesome and unique aspect to it. She also has a pretty strong charge attack, and that is very important to her kit as well. You don't necessarily need to use it, but it is important, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Do note that it does cause 50, which is more than your usual charge attack for any other non-Catalyst character. Catalyst characters generally have a heftier cost on their charge attack, and Klee is no exception here. But otherwise, modifiers are all fine, and there's nothing too crazy here other than the fact that she deals all AoE pyro damage. Next up, we have Jumpy Dumpty, and yes, it's not Jumpty Dumpty, I'd learned that one recently too, and the way that this works is you cast it, and the Jumpy Dumpty bounces about three times, dealing AoE pyro damage which, with each bounce, and then on the third bounce, the bomb splits into many mines. The mines will explode, explode upon contact with opponents, or after a short period of time, dealing AoE pyro damage, and this has two charges which is pretty important for how you're going to want to build her artifacts. But yeah, these bombs are no joke. The damage that it accumulates is really strong uh, after a period of time, and the mines don't mess around either, especially if you have a solid crowd control character like Kazuha to make sure each and every one of those mines are hitting your opponents. And the cooldown here is 20 seconds, and the duration is 15 seconds on the mines. That's not to say that you only have a five second downtime. I guess you kind of do. It's more it's more so saying that the mines only have a five second downtime. So if you, all the mines hit an opponent, you're still going to be waiting the full 20 seconds there and feeling like you were missing out on some of your skill. I will note, however, that the two charges things is important. The fact that the bomb splits off into the different mines, these cannot stack. If you use her E skill twice in a row, you're only going to get one set of bombs because the second bomb will delete the other mines that spawn from the first one. So you're going to want to make sure you try to utilize those mines first before you cast her second charge of Jumpy Dumpty. Next up is Sparks and Splash, and this is a really fun part of her kit and what deals a ton of damage. You cast it and basically for the duration of the ability, it continuously summons Sparks and Splash to attack nearby opponents, dealing AoE pyro damage. And the damage here is solid, duration 10 seconds, cooldown 15 seconds, energy cost 60. So this is all very normal. And the pyro application on this is nuts. It's just hitting opponents continuously. That's why you can just walk around with Glee with Sparks and Splash activated and it's automatically hitting opponents. It's very cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't carry over if you swap teammates or something. So you don't have that crazy, uh, you know, off field pyro damage application, but it is still really awesome as long as you're using it in conjunction with things like Yolan or Xing Shou or some other character to get a bunch of reactions and deal a ton of damage to a ton of enemies. Next up, we'll talk about these passives, and we're circling back to the charge attack mechanic. Basically, whenever Jumpy Dumpty and normal attacks deal damage, Clay has a 50% chance to get an explosive spark, and this spark actually eliminates the stamina cost for your charge attack and allows it to deal 50% increased damage, so that's really awesome. You can get some really big hits with their charge attack because of that, it deals that more damage. And then you're not going to be, you know, strapped for stamina because of the big stamina cost that it actually has on the charge attack. Now, the next passive also has to deal with their charge attack here. And whenever you do it, it is and it results in a crit hit. It's going to give you two elemental energy. This is a flat amount of energy. It's nothing too crazy or anything, but you do get two energy there, which is kind of just a nice thing to have in general, I guess. So overall, Klee is 
obviously oriented to be a pyro DPS type of character or some sort of sub DPS uh, pyro dealer here. And she has very good pyro application. In fact, a lot of the time we couldn't keep up with her pyro application in the past. And this has since changed with the addition of Yolong because now we can have two off field hydro units. So you can make a lot of vaporizing. Uh, go on and she is providing a lot of pyro to the team and although Klee is very good at pyro application she does suffer from some clunkiness whether that be from her actual normal uh, attacks here to where they just kind of have a slight delay between them and they feel a little slow the projectiles don't have a ton of range or if that's the charge attack where it just feels like it takes forever to actually happen those two aspects to her are very unfortunate. You also get kind of stuck in place on the initial cast of Jumpy Dumpty there, and that honestly doesn't feel that good. But overall, she's still a fantastic pyro unit, does good damage, but she does have that little bit of inherent clunkiness, and that hasn't been fixed. So I don't think it's going to be fixed anytime soon, unfortunately. And unfortunately, as a result of this clunkiness, one of the best ways to play her is to walk cancel for your attacks and jump cancel for your attacks, which I personally don't enjoy doing. But if you like to express that kind of skill ceiling and actually participate in those, then you absolutely can. I just wish that her kit worked like that in the first place and you didn't have to deal with the unfortunate delays in between each of these things. Overall, though, she's still a phenomenal character. All right, moving forward with the artifacts here, uh, you guessed it again for our third pyro character. Crimson Witch of Flames is pretty much just going to be the best. You get extra pyro damage bonus and you get the extra reaction damage, which is going to come into play into Sumeru, as we mentioned in our past two build guides here, because Dendro's right around the corner. This increases your burning damage. I'm sure it's going to interact with the other mechanic as well. And not only that, Klee is the other character who has the rare ability to take advantage of the second part of the four piece bonus here where you can actually stack up the increase in your pyro damage bonus there and you can actually get the max three stacks there if you time the bombs out properly which you're probably going to be doing to make sure you don't eliminate your mines too quickly but that is a little bit of management and getting all three stacks isn't necessary at all but two stacks certainly is still valuable However, it's not your only option and you definitely have some others in the four piece set category, most notably probably the Wonders Troop here because that increases your elemental mastery, which is going to be good for your reactions, but it also increases your charge attack damage by 35%. And that's really awesome. That's going to make sure those charge attacks are going to be dealing even more damage. And although those charge attacks are a little slow and a little clunky, they do hit big and making them hit even bigger certainly isn't a bad thing. So if you do want to lean into the charge attacks, then I think you're going to be a OK. And other than the four piece Wanderers troop, you do still have some other interesting options. Things like the Emblem of Severed Fate aren't bad, especially since Sparks and Splash deals a good amount of damage, making it deal more damage certainly isn't a bad thing. This isn't contributing nearly as much as something like Crimson Witch would be, where it would be contributing to all aspects of her kit or uh, something like the Wonders Troop, which helps with the reactions and helps her charge attack. But it is still a decent option. And you could try some other options. Something like Shiminawa's is an OK idea because you're going to be doing a lot of normal and charged attacks, but you certainly do still need the energy, so I really don't recommend it. There are a lot of different things that you can do, but ultimately, ultimately Crimson Witch of Flames and Wonders Troop are probably going to be your best picks. And something like Retracing Bolide isn't that bad either because it does increase that shield strength and you deal the additional 40% on your normal and charge attack. And she does kind of need a shield because of that inherent clunkiness to her kit. So being able to dodge isn't always going to be readily available and being able to tank hits while you're in between those animations is pretty nice. So this is also a really good option, in my opinion, especially if you find yourself getting hit a lot while you're trying to do what she wants to do. Uh, having something like a tracing bull eyed and a shield character will help you out a ton. And that's it for the four piece artifact sets. Let's talk about the two pieces, though, because the most general set piece for her that is just going to help all aspects of her kit is probably going to be something like the two piece Crimson Witch of Flames and then Shimanawas or Gladiators or or the uh, Echoes of an Offering, whatever 18% attack piece set that you like, those are all going to be great additions for her and help all of her kit, whether it's charge attack, normal attack, e-skill, elemental burst. It's a very good general use set. And if you have really good substats on a two piece split set like that, then I would probably go for that over something like a four piece of the Crimson Witch of Flames as that's just going to yield better results. Of course, you can pair that as well with like a two piece Wonders Troop or something. That's fine as well. But just splitting it up like that and having good subsets is always a fantastic option if you don't have a good four piece set. 
but I would try to strive for that four piece set greatness if you can and eventually get those good artifacts. Luckily, the main stats for Klee are quite simple and follow the traditional main DPS formula of attack percent, damage bonus, goblet, and crit rate or crit damage. Those are the main stats that you're going to want to be searching for, and I wouldn't really go for anything else. Uh, something like Elemental Mastery doesn't benefit Klee nearly as much considering her pyro application is crazy. It's just much better to have an attack percent sans and make sure all the pyro you're doing is actually doing the damage rather than trying to make sure your reactions are doing all the damage. And overall, I really wouldn't go for any other main stats unless you just absolutely have to, like maybe you don't have a pyro damage bonus goblet. Attack percent is fine there, but you are going to want that pyro damage bonus goblet as fast as possible. Subsets for Klee are also just as simple. Things like crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and elemental mastery are all the basics of what you're going to want to be looking for. Of course, having a little bit of energy recharge is going to be great too. She doesn't have a super high cost burst, it's only 60, so you are going to want a little bit of energy recharge, but she luckily does a good job at providing energy for herself, so you don't need a ton of it to make sure she's getting that burst as often as she could be. All right, weapons for Klee are pretty basic DPS oriented as well. She has a ton of options. Uh, things like Kagura's Verity and a myriad of different five star catalysts are really good on her. Things like crit damage, crit rate, and anything that increases damage in general are likely going to be a pretty good pick for her. And if you are using something like the Retracing Bolide that I mentioned before, the five star catalyst that lends itself to shields, I think it's Memory of Dust, that's a pretty solid option as well. But I wanted to make a note about the Wid Sith here and just how crazy it is. If you have a high refinement Wid Sith, it is oftentimes going to be outperforming a good portion of the five star catalyst for her. And she takes advantage of all aspects to it here with the attack percent, the elemental damage bonus, or the elemental mastery as long as you're doing a reaction team there is all fantastic crit damage is fantastic substat but this isn't your only option luckily she has some good four piece options especially her tailor made uh, book here the dodo go tails that not only increases your attack with its substat but via its passive and your charge attack damage which is really solid so if you find yourself having really good crit rate and crit damage um with Without your weapon, then something like the Dodo Coat Tails is a solid option and does a good job. But do note things like the Widsith are still just going to be better. However, if you like the theming and the matching of the outfit, then Dodo Coat Tails isn't a bad choice. Things like Solar Pearl also aren't bad, but it doesn't contribute to your charge attacks, unfortunately. So that is a little unfortunate, but it's still pretty solid. And if you don't like the clunkiness of the charge attack, then you're likely going to be fine in just using this and getting the increase on your burst and your normal attack, plus the extra crit rate, and that's pretty nice as well. And other than those options, you can use a couple of other things. They will do just fine. They're nothing crazy though, but I would really try to use something like Dodo Coat Tails, Wid Sith, Solar Pearl, or any of the other five-star catalysts. Uh, before any of those other options. Uh, Kagura's Verity is a phenomenal choice on her as well, but uh, Wid Sith is just incredible. So she does have some options in the weapon department. Unfortunately, not all of them are very free to play except Dodo Coat Tails, but you can only get Dodo Coat Tails if you were there when it was around. So good luck to the rest of you. Now let's talk a little bit about Klee constellations because some of these are pretty important. And if you have them, then she can really deal a lot more damage than she normally does. The first one here is fine. You get a chance to summon uh, an additional spark and whatnot, deal some extra damage. The second one is nice, decreasing defense of the opponents by a random amount of 23%, but still pretty good regardless. The C4 being the most important one and the one that is likely talked about the most, because whenever you're in Sparks and Splash, if you swap off of Klee, it just deals 555% of her attack as AoE pyro damage, so you can absolutely nuke opponents with this ability. If you time it right, you set it up all right, you can deal a ton of damage with this. So if you have the C4, you can nuke a bunch of stuff in the game. This certainly isn't required to make her a good unit, but it's certainly noteworthy because it just is capable of dealing so much damage. And then her C6 isn't nearly as impressive. It is pretty solid. You regenerate energy for the whole team every three seconds during Sparks and Splash, which is nice and all party members will gain 10% pyro damage bonus for 25 seconds. So that's 
pretty nice as well. Nothing too crazy here. And the C4 is really the most notable, second probably being the C2. I wouldn't really recommend going for any constellations, but they are still solid. All right, and I'll briefly go over my Klee stats so you know exactly how I got everything. We're at 1500 attack here, 19 elemental mastery, and we're sitting at 60 crit rate with 173 crit damage and 116 energy recharge, 83 on the pyro damage bonus there. I do want some more elemental mastery, make those vaporizes or overloads or literally anything deal more damage, especially with Dendro right around the corner. Elemental mastery is getting more and more appetizing. But other than that, this is a solid stat lit all around and I'd recommend something like this myself. You might want a little bit more crit rate just to make sure your charge attacks are actually critting because that can be very important. But that's only if you are really doing a lot of the charge attacks as for the talents, I have them all at level 7, if you don't remember there. And for the artifacts, I'll go over each and every one of them so you know exactly how I got the stats I have. And then we'll move on to some different team pairings. Alright, Klee teams are pretty fun and I love messing around with all of them. Probably one of the best ones though is going to be Klee, Kazuha, Yulon, and Ching Shou. This team does a ton of damage. And that is because Klee is, of course, your pyro enabler who does a ton of pyro application. But you have two off field hydro appliers now, and they can actually keep up with their pyro application, allowing you to vaporize a ton. And then Kazawa not only buffs the whole team, but debuffs the enemies. But he has the extra utility of gathering all of Klee's mines and making sure they hit the opponent, which really does add on to your overall damage. And in all honesty, I find a crowd control character like Kazuha or Sucrose or somebody else that can move Klee's bombs to be very valuable just because that extra damage is so awesome. It also helps guarantee that you're going to be swirling Pyro because of the fact that you're swirling up the bombs and Pyro has the highest priority on the ladder of uh, elements absorbed there. So that's very nice as well, because oftentimes when you have a Pyro DPS, you have to have another Pyro character to apply the Pyro to swirl off of to go to the Pyro DPS to make sure that they're dealing more damage. And with her mind mechanic, that isn't the case, which is fantastic. And then, of course, Yulan and Qingxiao are just cracked units here, uh, adding a lot to her damage and allowing her to vaporize even more than previously. There is one problem with this team, though, of course, the fact that they don't really have a healer, unfortunately. And that is a noticeable problem. And that can be a detriment, especially if you're not used to playing Klee and you find some of her gameplay clunky because you're likely going to get hit if you're not super used to it. I'm sure you'll be able to dodge with time, but but I myself did struggle dodging initially with Klee because of some of her clunkiness and not having a healer did feel a little bad. Xingxiao does help a ton here, though, by providing some healing and the damage resistance, which is our, the resistance to interruption as well, is really useful for Klee to make sure that you're not missing out a bunch. Klee isn't nearly as important to make sure you get off her like quote unquote combo as like Yoimiya or something. So it's not a big deal if you get interrupted, but it certainly does help you stay alive. The next team I wanted to mention is a little bit more of a meme team, but is a very fun team regardless. And that is Klee, Kazuha and Aloy, and then a flex spot of pretty much whoever you want here, likely a healer like Kokomi or something. But this is a very fun team because you can throw uh, Klee's Jumpy Dumpty, Aloy's E-Skill, and then you swirl both sets of bombs together to cause a bunch of melt reactions with Kazuha or maybe Sucrose here. It's just a very fun team overall, and it's a lot more effective than I thought it would be. I actually cleared one of the Dire Straits uh, challenges with this team, and I think like Yelan or something, and I was kind of surprised that I was able to because those challenges were surprisingly a little bit more difficult than I thought they'd be, and that was a nice change of pace, but that's off topic. This team is very fun and a little meme but cool regardless, and if that interests you, I highly recommend checking it out. On a more serious melt composition note, though, Klee unfortunately suffers the same issue as the Luke, where she's going to shatter her opponents before she melts them. And because her normal attacks do count as a heavy attack, so if you hit a frozen opponent with a Klee normal attack, it's going to shatter them. However, if they just have cryo applied to them or something, you can still melt them. So 
that does get a little complicated there and there are plenty of ways clay can still melt especially because the mines are everywhere so just be weary of that when building some sort of melt composition because while a team like this can work and it's pretty good for clay with the added elemental mastery from c6 diona and the vaporize slash melt potential from the two of them it does run into that potential issue of losing out on damage because you shattered an opponent rather than melted or vaporized them so if you do want to run some sort of milk composition with Klee, you're likely going to be better off doing a reverse milk composition with characters like Bennett and Rosaria to where Rosaria is going to be the one actually melting there. Or just not including a Hydro character in general is probably a good way to make sure that you're getting those milk compositions going off. And if that's the case, you could play somebody like Bennett and use some sort of other cryo character like a Diona, but Bennett does add a lot to Klee's potential damage there, and these are just a couple examples for you. And while Klee works in these reverse melt and these vaporized teams, she's also an amazing character for Mono Pyro. Klee does really solid damage on her own, but when you add her with the other insane Pyro characters and then somebody like Kazuha, the Mono Pyro team once again can actually do a lot of damage and is a very strong team. I don't find these teams particularly interesting, but if you do, then she's a good option for it. And you can, of course, run an overloaded team if you really like that reaction, but it does have the usual downside of knocking opponents pretty far back because of the explosion from the overloaded reaction, and Klee just really doesn't have that much range, so they're likely going to be outside of her range, which is pretty unfortunate. Characters like Yanfei honestly serve this purpose a little bit better just because she has significantly more range than Klee. So I would recommend doing that for Yanfei or maybe Yoimiya first before going for an overloaded team for Klee, but this is still an option if you'd like to do it. And just in case this wasn't clear enough before, Klee and Kazuha in general are an amazing pairing together just because Kazuha allows all of her bombs to deal damage to opponents. These are a really good pairing and pretty much whatever other two you want to slap on with them are going to do well, but Kazuha and Klee together are just in a really good combo. Same with somebody like Sucrose. Sucrose not as much as Kazuha because her, you know, actual sucking powers there are nearly as strong as uh, Kazuha's there, especially since they suffer from unfortunate auto targeting issues. So you can't really direct them where the bombs are. So Kazuha's just better at this, but you can still do it with sucrose. All right, that's going to be about it for this particular build video. Hopefully this helped you actually build out your Klee and gave you some different ideas for what you want to do with her or how you want to use her. But overall, she's a phenomenal character who is capable of really strong DPS and is a ton of fun to play and is ridiculously adorable. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope to see you guys in the next video. I'll catch you later. Peace.